is we're going to work on a couple of things. We're going to be working, we're going to talk about, about the concept and terminology on certain things. I'm going to show you the element selection. I'm going to show you selecting elements from the filter bar. I'm also going to be showing today some sketching tools like 2D tools, the move tool, the align tool, the copy tool, the offset, the copy to clipboard, the array tool, the mirror tool, the rotate. All right? And then I'm going to be showing you some useful tools that you're going to be seeing like temporary dimensions, snaps, keyboard shortcuts like we were given last week. So you, I will the link will be there. I'll also try to put the website on the thing so you guys can see it as well. All right, the shortcuts we got them from Autodesk website. They're there. They're nothing's hidden. Everything's there to help you. Nothing's there to confuse you or to make it hard. Just look a bit and you'll find the stuff you need. So when you see the word modify, so it's you're modifying an object. You can move it. You can edit it. You can create. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do when you're modifying an item. Same thing goes when you're selecting an item. If I go select for example this one chair if I go from left to right hold what happens I'm only grabbing the stuff that are inside the box which is from left to right if I go from right to left what's happening anything that goes into that box is selected so like in AutoCAD we have the selection window which comes very useful if I just want to get that one glass all I have to do is click here hold and I have the cup if I would have did the other way, I would have to do this. I have to grab here, do that, and then from here now, I would have to use the filter button in the bottom right corner, like you see here. Then I say, okay, I want just the generic model. I guess that's the cup. Press apply. You see I have it. Press OK. Then hold select. There's a lot of stuff I'm doing just to get to that one cup. So again, if you go from left to right, it's going to select anything that's inside the actual square that's fully selected from right to left even if I touch a little thing like the desk or a little bit of the cup it's going to grab it right away so again those that's important when we're using the selecting tools so if I grab for example a wall so now how do you know what you're selecting so if I go to the laundry room wall or even the bathroom wall, the one they share and I click on this wall you'll see right away it is selected it turns a darker color you also see it here for those of you who are just following, who forgot about this, this is the template practice sample project. Where as soon as you open Revit, you can open this file, and we're on level one. So again, just by clicking on stuff, for example, this window, this curtain wall here, you see, curtain wall, it's going to tell you what you're selecting in the object. And you'll notice, for if I go to the second level, just to show you, let's go choose this wall here just by clicking on the wall what do you notice happens you get a temporary dimension which is giving you dimensions of the length from this wall here the internal uh, from the internal of the wall to this side over here you can always move those they're temporary same thing is when I draw a wall if I click a wall let me just open up a new file quickly new I use the template they already have but again, by using the templates, it's already going to have the, the walls loaded and so forth. So if you use architectural one, you're going to get all the ac architectural components. If you use the mechanical one, you'll get all the structural components, electrical components, stuff like that. It's important you use the templates. Because if you use just a generic one, then you have nothing. You have to look for the walls. You have to look for the doors. you got to start from scratch. There's no point. So if I just click on the wall, you see I have my height and everything. And you notice I have my temporary dimension as I am drawing. If I click, it, st it, click, it stays for a while and disappears. If I want to see it again, I click on the wall and you see there's my dimension. There's certain ways to make it come alive. If I click on this icon over here, now that dimension becomes permanent, meaning it's always going to show. The other one you see disappeared. Again, I'll click on the wall here. See, it's showing me everything that's hidden. But if I want any of those dimensions to be present, I need just to click on this arrow here, this symbol here, or this one here, which makes a temporary dimension into an active one. So if you want this angle showing, I click here, and I have the angle. Click here, I have this one, click here, I have that one there. That simple. If I need to change the angle, it's even easier. Watch. I click on the 55 angle. Sorry. I click on the wall it belongs to. Then I click on the 55. 
put 45, it's going to automatically update it as well. If I go, if I want to change the 2100 over here, click on the wall, it's going to activate the dimension, and I can put 2000. So it got smaller. If I try just to click on the dimension itself, it's going to do this. It's going to give you the properties of the dimension style, which we don't want. If I double click on it, it's just going to keep moving the dimension as you please. So if you don't want to move it and you want to put it back with the extension line, you just click it back and you can put it back in its place. If you want to move a dimension, I'm just showing you because we have it here, and you do not want the leader line, that's what the line is that's following it. All you do is look up on the properties and just uncheck leader. And it's gone. So I can move this dimension anywhere I want. I could even say it belongs over here. This is not recommended to do, but I'm just showing you. I can say that this dimension here is 2000. See that? That's not right. It's wrong. In, in fact, as soon as I click on this wall here, this one here, you see that the actual number turns back to blue. And if I click on this wall, the number goes back over here. So if I, if I want to put the leader line back, click on the 2000, go back to leader, and it's going to bring it back to where that dimension belongs. If you, if, as you're clicking, you'll see if you pull it towards the middle, as soon as it hits the middle, it's going to stop moving to show you that's the middle. Then if you let go, it's going to stay in the middle. That's how I got it back exactly in the middle. Good. So that's what I want to show you quickly about the selection window and the quick tools. <coughs> if two objects are near each other, like these two walls here, if I click on one wall, like so, and I hit the tab button, you see I'm able to cycle through the objects from one wall to the other wall. Tab, tab. You're able to select more than one by using the tab option. If I use the shift tab, you see I'm able to remove it or add it. So if I click both, for example, shift, adds it, it removes it. Control, adds it. Control, shift, lets you select both at the same time. So you're able to cycle through it. So even, for example, this if I go over here, all right, my other one's closed here. And I want to go, I just press tab, 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 oops. Am I not active here? See, by just clicking on the chair, now I'm pressing tab, you notice how it's cycling through the chair and the table. Just click once on it, and anything near it is going to work. Same thing when you're doing dimensions. Later on you'll see, when you're trying to make it connect to the center, the exterior, interior, pressing tab allows you to cycle through the lines. So you see if I go here, I have this dimension here, this is what I'm trying to show you. See this dimension that we added of 45? I'm going to click on it, grab the blue line over here. You see it's in the middle. If I go press tab, uh, this one I can't because it's an angle. So let me do a dimension one. Let's do another straight wall here. Like this, and do another wall here. Okay, let's do annotate, just to show you quickly. You notice it grabs the center. If I do tab, it grabs the exterior, grab the other side. It cycles through what you need for what you're selecting. You can also hear the loud ding ding noise when you have the speakers on. It's going to get annoying, but it's to warn you that, it, that it's not selecting until you, it goes on it. Good. So when we are selecting now, like I showed you earlier, I have all the walls here, right? And I want to just select, I could click this wall here. Actually, no, better yet. Let me add some doors. So I have all these items, and I want to just select the doors, and I I'm in a rush. I can select everything like this, go to my filter at the bottom, and I could say, okay, only give me dimensions, only give me doors, only give me walls. It's going to do by category. So if I just want to see the doors, I do check none if it's a lot, and just click on the doors. Press OK, and it's only going to highlight me the two doors. If they're the same door, you'll see that if I change, I'm able to change them and they're going to modify it. If they're different sizes and I do what I just did there, they're going to change all the doors to the same number automatically. It's going to override it. The way you select items is also over here. You have the option to select underlay, meaning if you bring something in. You have pin objects you're allowed to select, elements by face, or drag and select, which means I could drag this thing here and I could drag it. See how I'm dragging it around? 
That's called select and drag. If I turn that option off, now I c even if I select it and I try to, oh, that's moving. No, what the hell? I shouldn't allow it. Okay. Oops. What the hell? It did it the first second. I don't know if you guys noticed. I tried to move the wall. It didn't allow it. And then allowed it a second time. But what it does, it, it, it stops you from, say, you have bring in an AutoCAD file. If you click by accident and drag it or nudge it, it's going to move it. So you could stop that so it doesn't automatically do that for you. You see later on, there's a lot of these little techniques which we'll come back to. Then you have linked, select links. The linked item items here, which is the little key icon at the bottom, allows you to bring stuff in. So you could bring stuff like Revit models, you could insert AutoCAD files, you could insert CAO files. There's a whole bunch of stuff you could add in and use it as a linked object, as a reference, as a display, like the site plan. Stuff like that. You could link them into the drawing. Uh, where's this one? Underlay elements, meaning if I have two floors on top of each other, like the first floor, second floor, the underlay allows you to see the floor underneath and you can select stuff from underneath the floor. Stuff like that. Right? And then you have select by face, objects, which, uh, like it says, allows you to select it by face. Right, back to drag element on selection. Let's see now. See, now it's not working again. See? Now it stops. If I click and I try to drag it, look what happens. I click, try to drag it, it says no. If I activate it here, I click and I drag it, I'm able to do it. The same object I did there should have been the same one here, but for some reason it did it here, but it didn't do it down there. So it was a little bit of a glitch, but you saw that it finally worked. Good. I showed you the selection, and I showed you the filter. The same filter you see down here, by the way, if I select more than one object, you'll notice I grabbed it down here because I'm used to the little shortcut at the bottom. But those of you who looked up at the ribbon, you see you have the same one up here. You have filters. You even have warnings. So if I click on the warning, it's going to tell me what's wrong. It's saying that the door is inside the wall. You see the warning? Because the way I, I dragged that wall before, it's inside the door, which makes no sense. If I go look at the 3D, it's a kind of a useless door. So I could just click on it. This is what's nice about Revit. And I could use the arrow keys to nudge it. Or I could even use a dimension if I want. So it's fixed. See how simple and fast that was? And if I go back to the floor plan, you'll notice that the change is right there. Good. So that was just a little bit of talking. Now I want to show you guys the very first one you see over here. So let me get rid of these walls. By the way, those of you who are questioning what are these symbols over here, these symbols here are the elevation marks. So this is saying this is the north view. If I click here, it's going to select the north view. See how it went black? The south view is at the bottom, the east and west. You can also notice that it automatically gives you levels. So the levels are important because when you're building the walls, it's going to ask you either set it by number or set it by level. There are two benefits. If I do it by level, so say I say set all the heights of my, f my first floor walls to level 2. And it happens to be 4,000. Later that day or later that week or even a month later, somebody comes back and says, no, I don't like the heights of those walls. Let's raise them up. Instead of you going one by one to each wall and changing the heights, if you had set it to level and you just type in 5,000, all the walls you have are automatically going to go connect to that 5,000 height. If it has to go smaller, it's going to bring it down. If it has to go higher, it'll bring it up. Walls, the doors, the windows, everything's going to attach together, assuming you did it by level. There is times where you could have multiple sizes. You could have some walls that go only 3 feet up or 4 feet up, small little walls. Then those ones, you don't connect it to height. You say 4 feet. Or if you know for a fact that there's going to be one wall that's always going to be 10 feet, you let it set at exactly 10 feet. You can set those presets right away. Now that that's aside, let's go on and start talking about the fundamental sketching tools 
in Revit 2019. So a good habit, a good practice I mean, is always start from the floor plan, the level, from the top view. Not the 3D, but the floor plan which is the top view. And you notice we don't have the X, Y, Z like we had in AutoCAD. It's automatically going to draw on that face for us. So if I go choose 2D elements, so let's go, uh, let's go draw a line. So let's do the, the model line. This is the basic 2D elements we're sketching now. You notice these are 2D tools. We've seen these in AutoCAD, right? We've seen them in AutoCAD Architectural. We've seen them in AutoCAD Mechanical for those who did it. You see we have the line tool. This is used to draw lines. We have the rectangle polygon, uh, this is polygon, polygon, and a circle tool right over here. We have our arc tools underneath here. We have our pick line right over here. That's something that allows you to pick lines in the drawing already. Then you also have this one here which is I think is the spline then you have the ellipse and then you also have the partial ellipse as well so these are all 2D elements you will see all these exact objects and look you even choose your line types if you want even if I choose the wall tool those same tools will pop up over here we saw that I'm just showing you you could have them in 2D elements in model or if I just click on the actual wall tool or type in W for the shortcut you see it's going to activate the wall and from there you see you have the same modified panels if I want to draw a straight line click the line from here to here I have my straight line if I want to draw a rectangle from here to here I have my rectangle if I want to draw inside the circle inscribe which means in the circle see how it's showing you inside the circle as well or if I want to draw outside the circle If I want to draw an actual circle wall. So these are drawing walls, believe it or not. These are all walls. When I do the 3D, all these random shapes I'm showing you are going to be in a wall. If I want to draw an arc, a three point arc. One, two, oops, that's too much. Three. Let's do this one. I think we get the point of me drawing all these random ones. But it's just to show you. What's this one again? This is a uh, tangent. So let's go from here. Select an arc point. So let's go here. From here. There you go. I think we're connected to this guy, just that cool. All right, and then you have the next one. You also have the pick line. So the pick line comes in handy is if we did this before. If I went back to architectural, model line, and I drew that line over here. So let's just draw a simple 2D line. So this is also useful if you're bringing something from AutoCAD and it's lines, right? 2D AutoCAD, watch. I'm gonna go back, architectural wall, use the pick line option, click on the line. If I press tab, it's going to grab all of them at one shot. If I don't and I want to click one at a time, you could do that as well. There's nothing wrong with that as well. Nothing's wrong for now. If I go check, look at all the walls I have built. A circular wall, an octagon, a pentagon, a wavy one, a circle, and so many different things. You'll notice that if I go to the elevations, you see that they're all above the, the height level I want. You could close the door. If I want to select them, I can select them all like this go to top constraint and say up to level 2. Now all it's going to do is going to drop all my walls to the level 2. So like I said before, if I go change this number from 5,000 to 10,000 oops, I missed the zero there. You see all the things. Are they going to change in every view or just the north view? Every view. If I go in the east view, it's there. If I go in the south view, it's there. The only time it won't do it is, for example, if I just click on this wall, this wall, hold control, I forgot, and this wall here, and I say, you know what, don't go to level 2, go to 5,000. Oops, that's very small. Go to... Is lock oh, number lock is off. There you go. And I bring it down. And then in that elevation you see on those certain views th those walls will be down. Okay? Good.
Okay, that was just a sound effect. So we have our walls now. So that was a simple, just drawing the wall using our simple 2D rectangle, not 2D, but you know what I mean, elements. We saw pick point, and we saw, so those are our fundamental sketching tools. Now, if we're going to go to the modify. See, right away, as soon as you're in the wall tools, it allows you to modify. If I want to move something, I have the move tool. If you notice, the symbols are identical to all softwares that we've used, owned by Autodesk. So now, if I go click on this wall here, or I even just go to the modify tab, you see I could use the move tool or shortcut MV. The shortcuts are always in brackets next to the name. Also, if you hover over, as you see in the, in the video, that it's actually showing you how it's going to work, if you forget. So if I click on this wall here, and I click and drag, you see I'm able to drag it outward or inward. If you don't want to like the orientation of the wall, you could also flip it. We've seen that before. Flip it one direction, flip it inside direction. We will get to that later on when we do more on walls of which way the arrow should be. You could tell by when you put a door, which way the door is and so forth, or by the material you're using. Good. So when we're doing the move tool, again, we could just hover over. You see it's MV or click and drag it left, right. You could even, while it's selected, use the left and right arrows and nudge it to the left, nudge it to the right. If you zoom out, the further you are, the bigger the nudges are going to be. See, I wanna, if I'm zooming, right now it's out here. I'll use the numbers that you see. We'll put it at 1,000, right? Now you see it's at 1,000. If I zoom in, right, and I go left, oops, let me put the dimension. Out here, you see it. It's going 1,140, one, it's going by 100, right? If I zoom out, now it's going by bigger numbers. You zoom out again, it's going bigger numbers. You see? If I zoom in, the more I zoom in, the more smaller the nudges are going to be. The more you zoom out, the more it assumes you want a bigger space. That's if you want to use the nudge left, nudge right. Good. Okay, so we have the move tool. You also have the option to constrain your move. So which means what? If I use constrain and I click here, it's going to constrain the, the move only left and right. There's no chance of me making a mistake and going a little bit off. If I uncheck constraint, see now I could go at an angle. It can move it down, say angle 157. Again, using the constraint option. This join means it's going to disconnect it. See now, if I go here, it's no more connected to that wall. If I left it before like we had it, and I did the move, and I uncheck this to leave it connected, you see when I move the wall, Come on. It's going to bring the wall with me. If you use the disjoin, it's going to separate. It's just going to take the wall off and say, I don't need this wall anymore. It's, it's independent. Is that clear for the constraint and disjoin? Good. So again, if I can grab it, I can move it. If I don't want it to come with me, just click, get out of it, click once. Sorry, click the move button, click on the wall you want. Oops, right now it doesn't work. Click on the wall, hit move, and constrain meaning goes one direction, and just join it as you want. Good. That was a simple move command. If we wanted to align something, so let's make another wall here. If I wanted this wall to align with this wall, which is, is the align tool. So we're going to go use now, modify, and go to select align. Again, the shortcut is AL. You choose the wall you want as the reference, and then you choose the wall where you want it to go. First thing, you choose the wall you want as a reference, and then you choose it. So if I want this to be my reference, I choose that one first. Align this with this. Then you see you have a lock button. This lock button comes very useful. What do locks usually do? It means stuff are tied together, they're constrained. If I put a lock on this, what that means is when I change the dimension of this wall, this one will follow. They're going to lock to each other. So watch. If I pull this wall left, the other one comes with it. 
if I pull it right, it follows. Same thing goes for the top one. If I click, they're always now a team. They're stuck together. They're a bond, like all of us. All right? If you unlock it, now it's independent. Now you've finished. You're on your own now. You're doing what you want to that piece by itself. So again, when we're doing the align tools, if I want this to be my main guy, then I choose the first one is, it even tells you, please select a reference point to align. So I'll choose either the outside face, the midpoint, or the inner one. I'll choose the midpoint this time. So reference this face here with this face here with this face here. So as you can see, I could grab more than one. Uh, that was one thing, sorry. If I want to grab more than one align, I do the same thing. Align, I do multiple alignments. Now I choose this as my reference. Then I could choose this face here. Then I could choose this face here. Choose this face here. Oh, that probably screwed it up. Choose this one here. You notice I'm going to keep bringing anything I want that's going to align to that tool. Clearly this is going to screw up because it was a pentagon and it made no sense for that size to change. All right? So that's a simple align. You could do one alignment at a time or you could do multiple, the middle, the end, whatever you want. You could align the doors, you could align the walls, the furniture, whatever you need using the align tool. Either may it be one object or multiple at the same time. You could even tell it right away to select only the faces of the core, which is in the middle, or the center, or just the center line. You could have it set so it automatically chooses which one you want it to select right away. If you do wall faces, it's going to choose the outside or inside. But you could always hit the tab button to change it. Okay? And all found in the option bar. So now that we did a couple of arrays, a line, sorry, a couple of moves, let's go do the offset. So what does offset do? It's exactly like it did in the other software. It offsets the actual object. So if you see again in the demo, as soon as you click, it's going to offset it to that object. Click the offset. Click on the one you want to offset. Right away it tells you, see the line? It's giving you, but how do you know what the distance is going to be? If you actually look up right over here, you see numeric 1000. And if you have the option to copy it or not copy it. what's If I don't use copy, what's going to happen when I do offset? It's going to, it's like a move option. It's going to move it 1000. So if I uncheck copy, for example, and I go to this wall here, you see it moved it up 1000. It went sideways because I angled it. If I don't know the number and I want to just offset it to this over here, I do graphical and I say from here to here. And it's going to offset that distance. See, now it's keeping the distance away. So if I want to see, it's going to keep the distance along the same path. So the distance from here to here is the same from here to here because I use that as my reference. If I don't want to use that, I want to use numeric, I could go back, do copy, and say offset this. 1,000, whatever that is. Click here, and it's done. Another thing that's really nice about Revit is I could also do offset 12 feet. Enter, and it's going to give me what 12 feet is. I could also say offset 2 meters, 3 meters. It's going to automatically change the units back and forth to what we need. Okay? So you could copy the offset, you can move the offset. So these are the offset options. After you're done playing with the offset later on, you also have the copy tool. Shortcut CO. The offset one is OF. The align AL. So how do we use all these things? For example, copy CO. All I type in is CO. Enter. And it selected the command. Now I could go back here, click on this object. I wasn't selected. And now I can see, again, same object again, constraint. Constraint meaning it goes only in one direction. But we have another one called multiple. Why is it that disjoint is not active? It's already disjoint. It's a single line. So it can't disconnect from itself because it would make no sense. So if I do copy, multiple, now watch. If I click from here to here, you see I have the same one multiple times. 
Why is there a gap? Because I chose that as my reference point. If I didn't want to have that space, I could have just did copy from this point here to here. So now it's always going to be the same thing, the same numbers. Good. That's the copy object. Multiple or unmultiple, you could uncheck it as you please. The next one I want to show you. So we did this. Let's, let's, let's continue down this this line over here, and then we'll go back. The next thing after the copy, let's show you the mirror. So we have this beautiful ugly shape over here. Let me just move it. No, let me take this guy. Uh, no, let's take this one. And let me unselect this. And let me move this over here. Okay. So now we have this object, and I want to mirror it to the other side to make it look a little different. I'll grab this corner here, and do this. I don't know why it disconnected itself, but here we go. We did this shape like this, so we could see it. All right. Now I want to mirror it. By the way, this is the one I used pick lines before. Now I want to mirror to the other side. So we go mirror. It says now select what you want to do. So let's press escape. Mirror. Select the object. So let's go choose this guy here. Enter. Now I said you want to copy it or not. So if I don't want to copy it, I just choose this line here as a reference. And it's going to mirror to the other side. You need a line to mirror to the other side. You notice I took it from here. I mirrored it here. If I want to go against this side, I can either have a wall, like so, or I could have used a model line. I'll do two of them. So now you see. Let's go back to the mirror. Click the object. Right? Click the line I want. Press Enter. Click the line I want here. There you go. If I want to mirror against the green one, take this again. Click mirror. If I'm okay what I selected, press enter. Now I choose the line. Oops. I got out of it. Mirror. Select the object. Enter. Now choose the line. And there you go. Choose the object. Hit enter. Choose the mirror line. Like we did in AutoCAD. Very similar. Then we have question. We have the trim extend. So now we have all these lovely walls. Let's build a few walls here. Let's go from here, stop, build another wall from here, stop, build another wall from here, stop here. Okay? So now we have the object on modify to trim extend to corner, which is shortcut TR. So now I could click on it, it's active. It's telling me to choose where I want to extend trim. So if I want to extend, I click one, two. See how it extended? I could go to here now, do one, two, one. Is this going to work? No, because they're not parallel to each other, so it won't go that way. But if this wall here were to be cutting through like this, and I were to do the same object again, watch. I could do one, two, and it's going to trim those lines. If I want the opposite way, I would do one, two, and it gets rid of them that way. So you're trimming the lines you want along the path. Okay, and we'll, go, we'll keep going along this thing for now. Then, and then we're going to stop at a certain point. I want to show you the copy the clipboard. Then we go on to the split element. So this is where you did like in the last project, where you had a wall and you split the object in half, which is using the SL, split element. So I click on it, click here, and now this wall is cut, one wall here, one wall here. You also have the, ob the opportunity to do split with a gap. So you could have a gap in the wall as well. So you see here, I could cut it. It's going to show you the picture. One wall, two walls, and get rid of the one in the middle. Oh, sorry. My, my bad. It cuts a little section out. So for example, if I go like this, I choose the gap of being, say, 500, so we see it. Oh, that's too big. Let's just do 300. And I click this wall here, from here to here. You see now, every time I do it, there's a gap of 300. That's the gap that's going to separate between them. Each time I click, gap 300.
Good. So before we move on to the, okay, we did these ones, the array, which is the fun one, or the scale, or the extension again, or, or the multiple one, I want to show you about the clipboard, which is the copy. So if I go to this object here now, so right now if you notice, let me go put a component. This is to show you something. Let me go put this desk over here. Right? We have a desk here. We agree? We all see the desk? It's on the level one. We all see that? Good. So now if I want to have a copy, so look, if I select these over here and I press copy, not the copy over here, but the copy to clipboard, control C. What that does is going to make it copied into the system. By doing that, you notice I have an object that says paste now. There's a new one, which means paste a uh, um, clipboard. What that allows you to do, it allows you to do multiple I items now. Because look, if I go to the second floor, do I have anything on the second floor? No. This is the underlay of my basement, of my first floor. If I want those tables to be on the same as on my second floor in the same location, all I have to do, go back to level one, just to see it, go back to modify, paste, align to select the levels, and I choose second level. Press OK. Now you're going to notice whatever I had, those three desks I had on the first floor are also going to be now on the second floor in the exact location. So if I go look here, I have a one here and one here on the same level. There's no floor right now, so they're just floating in the sky. But that's allowing you to copy it to the same one. Same thing goes for these walls. All these walls right now stop on the same level, correct? If I select all these walls, let's see if it works. Control C, which is the same thing like pressing the copy button over here. Paste, align to select the levels, and I choose level two. It's going to throw my walls also to the second floor. So if I go look, they're identical. So when would you use this is, for example, a hotel building. When the first three floors are the same, you can copy. But once you get to the level, say, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, they're all identical floors with different numbers. So what you do is you do one floor, and then you could copy align it to the rest of the floors. So you're not wasting time. You could just have it all done on one shot. So that's when you have multiple floors that are identical to each other. Good. So we saw you could paste it, align levels. You could even paste it in the same location. So if I didn't want it to go the same spot, so let's go back to the first floor. Let's just take this guy here, copy him here. Control C. Go to the second floor. And now I could do paste, align to the same place. It's going to go right on top of the same table it was before. And it's going to say you already have the desk there as well. So depending on how you're pasting it, it's going to go to the pick the level, current view, and it's going to line it back where it was before. All using the paste clipboard. There's so many different things you could do with it. This comes very useful when you do high-rise buildings, when there's something that has multiple floors that are identical to each other. Good. You can again, you can align to the second levels, you can align to the selected views, to current views, same place, or align to a pick level like we did earlier before. One thing I want you guys to remember you cannot copy is you cannot copy axes, you can't copy levels, you can't copy grids, you can't copy interior elevation symbols. They're all going to say no, you cannot copy because it already exists on another floor. Those things you cannot do. Dimensions sometimes is going to say the same thing. It's not going to work because it's linked to the walls below and so forth. All right? Good. Now let's go on to the array tools. So let's go use, let's go load a sofa. Go under, to load a sofa, by the way. Okay. So now let's add another component. Let's add a sofa. So all I'm doing, by the way, is just doing architectural component. And I'm just looking at the preloaded stuff. And I'll just take this desk because it's the one I have right here. So let's take the desk. I have a desk inside it. So there's two types of arrays. There is the 
linear array which is making straight line array and the radio one which makes like a circle let's go modify array see again AR click on it click on the table okay it's a little bit delayed click twice apparently and click on the table now it tells you you're in this case here it's linear so it's gonna be a straight line how many desks do you want I want five desks right now without realizing it, I have five desks on top of each other so if I want to move it I say move to second so I could do from here to here this is my distance now I'm gonna have five desks with that distance over there we saw how I did that if I don't give it a distance watch I'll do it again if I just click array click on the desk enter and now I say I want 10 desks right Oops, 10 desks right now I have 10 desks literally physically impossible inside each other on top of each other why because I need to do a distance I could say up to next meaning from one desk to the next desk or I could say from one desk to this side I need this many desks so I'll do to second I'll say from here to here which is a little bit more 2000 so now I'm gonna have that same gap of it I have the desk plus a little bit more if I want to put change the number here to 15 desks I have 15 desks within a certain limit I press enter and I have all the desks there I could grab this desk and you notice by moving them around it's changing the orientation so we they're grouped together so let's go back undo that or redo that sorry let's go back to the desk again this one here let's bring it here do the same thing array this time do to last and I'm gonna do how many we'll say 15 again I'm gonna say from here to here let's see make it a little bit bigger we see it from here to here there should be 15 desks so I chose one location to the next location if the location was small the desk would be overlapping each other for example if I go change this to 20 desks right now still fits if I go change this to 30 desks or 60 is too much 30 see how they all start lining up on top of each other if I switch it back to 28 desks you kinda could see how it works so that's using the linear array so let's go back now let's get rid of these guys and let's go back to this one guy do the array again this time click the object array sometimes you have to click twice I don't know why let's go use the radio one which makes a circular array now it tells me how many do you want second and it's also telling me the place the center of rotation so I click here place and now I choose where I want it to rotate around so if I choose this point right over here that's gonna be my reference of where it's going to rotate so if I go change this to 20 desks and I click from here to my next one it says he to the last let's go up to here I'm gonna have all these desks cause that's what I chose but instead of doing to last I'm gonna go change it array choose this piece again array to the second one let's go choose 10 desks go from the center point I can either click place it or grab the blue line and move it from here then go from this distance to the next distance like so and now I'm arraying the desk along that path I could even activate the dimension so I could see the dimensions once it's there And there we go I have it then if I click on one I could see my distance and how many I have in the array so that was the array tool for the linear and for the radial one as well when you are doing this you could go see I want this desk here I could click here and I could ungroup this desk which means what which means this desk here is independent from the rest but if I go back to the array you notice I can't keep changing how many desks I have anymore they're still grouped together but they're not as active while before if I do undo if I clicked on this desk here and I change this to 5 
you notice I'm able to change the number 5, 10, 15, 20. The second I take one of those and I ungroup it from the pack, they don't, they don't allow you anymore to, justify, to modify it anymore. Same thing goes for the linear. I'll do it again just to show you. Linear. Let's go say five desks from here to here. You see, I could do five desks. I could go put here now 10 desks, whatever I want. But the second I grab this desk here and I do ungroup, it actually makes them all independently. These ones are still grouped together. Don't get me wrong. If I move this guy, oh, they're actually all ungrouped. Sorry. Everything's ungrouped. My bad. Everything becomes ungrouped. Is that clear? Any questions? All right, so now we're going to continue on with the mirroring tool again. So just to show you, if I that the one we did before, which is you need to have a pick access. This one here, if I want to mirror the same object again, I'll select it. I'll use the one that says draw the line by using DM. So now I could just draw a line like so, and it's going to mirror it the way I draw the line. So it's instead of having to look for one. So one of them is going to be for a, a line that actually exists. And the other one's a temporary mirror line like I just showed you there. It's temporary. I made it. And it worked. Good. I could have also mirrored along a wall, the midpoint, and so forth. We saw those before. Okay. I showed you guys the rotate already, correct? We did that one there. I think we did the, the scale. Very straightforward. I kick scale. I select the object I want. I could do numeric and I could say 0.5, which means half of it. Click on the object. And it came half the distance. Two is two times bigger. One is one times bigger. You've seen those before. Okay. When you're trying to rotate, say, the sofa, for example, or the table, click on the object, do the rotate. And I could just move the point from here to, say, this corner here. And I could go from one direction to the next. We saw how I did that, right? We just click rotate. Click the object you want to rotate. Click the object, then hit rotate. It's always in the middle, but if you click on the blue thing and drag it to the corner you want, and then choose the angle as a reference, it's going to work for you in the way you like it. You could do it 42 degrees, whatever degree you want. But the default is going to be the center of that drawing. And similar to the other one, when you are doing rotate, for example, this table, I could copy it. So I don't actually have to. I could do this, similar to array, and go from here to a here and have a copy of that table instead of just rotating it. So it's always the option. Always look at the options when you're clicking. You see you have disjoint, copy, angle, place your center of rotation. Similar to what we've done in the past. All right. Finally, I just want to go over some useful tools like I spoke about earlier. And this will be the end of the video, which would be for temporary dimensions. For example, right now I have no clue what the dimension of this wall is. All I could do is just click on the wall, and a temporary one is going to come up. It's even going to tell me that we use the, the object. See, if I want to join those walls again, I just do allow join. And it's going to connect the wall from the top, or not, or I just do that. I don't know why it said allow. Oh, because we have two floors. We're all, I think I, I joined the bottom floor underneath. It's okay. But what I was saying is you have temporary dimensions. So I just click on the icon here, and it makes your dimension permanent, so you could actually see it. You could add a dimension, erase it as many times as you want. They'll always come back. It's very simple. Look, if I click here, delete go back to the same wall, I could put it back up again. So even if you delete it by accident, it's not the end of the world. I could also go back, annotate, align, and do my own dimension from here to here, and you'll have a dimension. Stuff like that. So you have the temporary dimensions, which are very useful. The other options you have are these snaps. So what are the snaps useful, like we've seen before? They come useful. So if I want to draw a wall, for example, and I want to connect it to this, look, automatic snaps are going to go right away there. See? The center. It's going to do it for me. As stupid as this wall looks, it still did it for me. It's going to allow you to snap to those objects. Maybe a straight line, 
a circle or an arc. So Revit will display the snap points and lines to help you align objects. For example, if I want to align this wall here, watch. I do wall, I click here. Without clicking, just hover. You see I have the reference lines of where they're going. If I start this, I could go here and go to my where it's going to actually connect. See? And it's a vertical and extension. I click and it will join the walls together. And again, you have that lock option, which does what? Which means this end and that end will be locked together if I accept it, if I chose to. Those are the snaps which come very useful. You see that the snaps automatically come on by themselves. Look, if I want the midpoint of this wall, right? Look, I'll just go until it snaps to right here, midpoint. From here to here. There's a, there's a cut in the wall, by the way. That's why it looks like that. To this midpoint. Let's go to this one here. Watch. Right over here. It's going to automatically give me the snaps you need. You don't have to turn them on or off. They're automatically going to go on for you. One thing I want you guys to notice is some of you may have something look like this. See how thick the line is? To get rid of that thickness to be able to see it, if you just type in TL, it's going to make the thick lines go to thin lines. TL, th thick lines, thin lines. You're going to see a lot of times I'll come by your desk. If I see it like this, I hate seeing it, so I'll shrink it for you. There's an icon here, which I'm not remembering where it is at the, uh, at the moment, but I just remember TL to go on and off. Is this it? No, that's line work. I'll come back to it. It's going to come back and you'll see. I'll show you later on where that icon is. In view. Oh, here you go. Thin line, thick line. Under graphics. But just remember TL is the fastest way to do it. Alright, so you can see you could do the end point, midpoint, all those beautiful snaps we did in AutoCAD. They all come here automatically. If I go, again, just to show you, just a simple wall and I want to grab nearest, which is here. See, I automatically grabbed it to so here. It did it for me. So those are the kind of things you want. If you want to modify your snaps for any reason, all you go is you go to the manage, and you go look for the little gear, the little magnet for snaps. In here, you have your snaps. See, in this case, they're all on already. If you want to turn them off, by all means, turn them off, whatever you want. You could even do your increment snap, see, 1,000, 100, 205, or even the angles you want. If you know there's a certain angle you're going to use, type it in there, and then when it gets to that angle, it's going to stop for you. If you don't want to see all these snaps, you could uncheck them. And you want the shortcuts? These are all the shortcuts for those snaps as well. To use shortcuts list above, to close, turn off override. So if you want to override something, say it keeps snapping to itself, just type in SS. And it's going to allow you to not go near that wall without it snapping together. So that's going to come useful later on when you're trying to connect. If you're OK with that, just press the OK and everything else is good. If you want to know another useful thing, the keyboard shortcut. So I did give you a, a paper in the, fi in the folder. But if you want to see what's already on the computer, all you have to do is what? You're going to go to View. Then you're going to go to User Interface. And then you're going to go to Keyboard Shortcuts. There, right there, is going to give you, if I click on Shortcuts, these are where you're going to modify your shortcuts. These are the shortcuts that it already has on the computer. View Range, VR, Close, SZ, Spring, whatever you want, they're already set here. So these are the, the ones that are already pre-made inside the software. Okay. Again, how do I get to this? Under View, User Interface, Shortcut Keys. These are ones that if you if you find something that you use constantly and you're wondering why I never had one, you could just type it in. If I want, this is just a random, let's go here. Let's go to uh, a modify tab and let's go to cut to clipboard, right? I could just double click here. I could press new keys and I could type it in and, I, and accept it into the drawing. I'm not going to do it now, but you can modify your template. Just remember, if you do, if you start changing the ones that already exist, and you go work in another company or you work on another computer, and they don't allow you to bring those shortcuts on, you're going to be completely thrown off. So try to use the ones they already have, and if you want to add them on, add it on. But always remember how you did that if you can't change it later on. Some other frequently used tools in Revit 
is the escape button. You're going to notice I keep, like in AutoCAD, I'm constantly pressing escape. Your left hand shouldn't be holding your head while working Revit. should be on the escape button most times or near the keyboard. Your right hand always on the mouse. If you want to go fast in Revit, you can't do it with one hand because it's going to slow you down. But if you were able to, instead of holding your head up and you actually put it near the keyboard, you could go a lot faster, hitting the escape button. You have the control button, which gives you two uses. It allows you to select add objects, and it also allows you to copy elements. So meaning what? If I hold control and the click and drag, it's going to copy that element for me at the same time. Remember the click and drag? Hold control, it's going to be able to copy it. So this desk here, if I want another one, I click, hold control, and drag it. I have a second one. Useful tools along the way. Shift button does two things. It, it unselects, and also if you hold shift and click it, it does nothing. <laughs> Just wanted to show you. If you hold shift and you click on an element, it will remove it from the selection. That's what the shift does. The control shift. If you hold both of them together, control shift and you select through a selection box like this, it's going to select objects that you weren't who you want. You could unselect it, deselect it. The shift mouse scroller allows you to rotate along the 3D element. Okay? Then you have the delete button which, like most things, deletes things. You have the arrow keys on your keyboard which lets you nudge things to the left, to the right. And then you have the space bar which allows you to flip a wall, allows you to flip a door. Flip a window, reverse it. By flipping, it means going from one opening to the other side. You're flipping along the walls. When you're placing furniture, if I bring in the table again, watch. Architecture, component. If I hit the space bar, it's going to rotate my table. All right? There's so many little things these things do. The tab button. I told you earlier, if I have two walls here and I do tab, it's going to cycle through the walls supposed to. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, I did cap locks. See? Tab is going to cycle. No, don't use cap locks. It's the tab button. If I do control tab, it's going to cycle through the open sheets I have. There's so many things you could do in Revit, but unfortunately for today, that is all. Thank you so much for following. Like, subscribe, share. And comment if you like.